Welcome back y'all. We are just unloading the truck from our turkey hunt back here in the dangle cave where we clean guns, knives, and get prepared for the next fishing trip. But on today's video we're going to be cooking up our first turkey that we've ever harvested. So I've never cooked a wild turkey and I've got my first one so I'm going to walk you guys through uh, the process and we're going to see how it tastes. I actually thought I was going to be able to get two turkeys. The action was so hot on the first day. Nice, crisp spring morning. Beautiful. Turkeys were gobbling everywhere. We saw like 20 turkeys that day. It was crazy. We were trying to get a mullet man, a turkey, and like 12 different jakes and toms and hens all came in. And he was trying to get one with his recurve bow. Didn't get it done. We got up the next day thinking we were going to blow it out. We were all going to get turkeys. We, we only ended up getting one, and it was Mike's turn. Beautiful Tom, uh, it worked in perfectly, and then it got really windy. We couldn't hear things. Turkeys couldn't hear us. They shut down, so we decided to come back. But I did find a piece of a, uh Indian tool fragment. Really cool. Check that out, guys. We've got quite a few uh, arrowheads and things out at the at the lease it makes it makes it really fun just turkey hunting in the spring shed hunting everything like that uh, you can tell it's a it's a piece of a tool because it's been worked on both sides so that was really cool and then and shout out to mullet man for for making me this knife right here carved that out himself pretty awesome so anyway shout out to mullet the prep work that we've done i've had this turkey in a brine for about 12 hours now the turkeys since they're wild wild turkeys, they're running around, they're chasing. I mean, they are crazy, especially this time of year. It's like a buck in rut. They can just lose a lot of weight. They're running, you know, they're mating every day. So they're incredibly lean. All right, let's grab one of our knives. I'm going to go with you know, the classic stag handle, boning knife. Butte. All right, it's time to fire up the old woodwind here. Confirm. There we go. Let me show you guys how I've been brining this. I've been using a Dometic cooler, which is an electric cooler instead of like a bucket or using like a Yeti or something like that. I didn't even think about it when I've had this thing, but it's perfect for uh, brining. I've had this plugged in overnight and I've had it at uh, 37, 38 degrees. And here is our turkey. There's a lot of rosemary in there. There's bay leaves. There's whole peppercorns. There's salt. A little bit of sugar. Uh, and that was, I don't know, pro probably a gallon and a half worth of it. So we're going to pull that out. We've got it in this little, little deal here. We'll just pull that out. Let it drain. And then we're going to cut the legs off. And then put the rest of the turkey on the smoker. In the kitchen, the OSG. Working on cookie recipes. This is like the book of all my ideas. Okay, so you've got a book coming out in October. Yes. 60 plus cookie recipes yeah. going down in the book. I'm on number 23. So, y'all, she's been grinding, doing cookies every week every for, for you guys. Yeah, literally every day. I. I'm taking the brunt of it right in the daggum lovies. <laughs> right in the daggum lovies. It's happening. I'm making some scones today, like scone cookies. You're not a huge scone person, but. Not really, no. But you're still gonna have to try them for me. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. That's my job. Mm -hmm. That is my job in this situation. So uh, we're borrowing your kitchen right now, babe. This is a wild turkey, which you have never had before. As I well. have not. So um, this is going to be exciting. Uh, I had I had a little bit of wild turkey the other day, um, not the brown kind, not the brown water kind. No. So the way you can do this, y'all, out in the field is you can just breast the turkey out. Uh, that's the biggest part of the meat of the bird. I chose on my first one to just try to do the whole thing. It was a bit of effort to pull the feathers off and everything, but I just wanted to get a sense for the whole bird. So how you clean the bird, you go in from the, the rear bumper uh, and you pull out the innards from the, from the rear bumper. That's how you do it. 
I was trying to figure out what this part over here was. Uh, okay, so the so the neck is still in there. Yeah, <laughs> we still got the neck going on. You can spatchcock it, do whatever you want. I just I took the whole thing, and um, Steph, could you give us a rundown on the brine? Oh, one more time, what's going yeah, on? Yeah. Okay, that? so I heated up um, some water. I don't know measurements, y'all, um, but I did a bunch of salt. That was my base. Salt and a little bit of sugar. Um, whole black peppercorns, whole white peppercorns, um, thyme, oregano, a little bit of rosemary, and yes, like two or three bay leaves. And then you add the hot water in there, make sure it dissolves really nicely, and then you can pour it over the chicken. Making sure that dissolves is the key. Okay, making sure it's dissolved, and we put it in, in the thematic uh, overnight. You want to hold the game for me while I cut the legs off? I'm going to take the turkey off at the knees. I still want to keep the top leg portion to cook with the rest of the turkey, but this this limb right here is going to get a little dry out there, so I'm just going to cut it around this joint right here. You know, it's like what you get at the state fair. I was going to say, you know, you always hear about the grill or the yeah. smoked turkey leg. You know, there's all there's all those tendons and whatnot going on in there. See how difficult this is to to pop. Just got to find the joint. The old joint pop. Uh, here it goes. There we go. One turkey leg. And these didn't sit in the brine like I thought they would. I should have flipped the turkey. Oh man. The problem was we didn't have enough real estate. I'm gonna cook these bare, get the smoke on them for probably an hour, and then I'll throw them in tinfoil with the juicies and then. Uh, we'll let them cook the rest of the way. So, what is it? What's a bird need to cook to? One sixty. One sixty five. One sixty five. So I'll probably get the internal tip to one fifty five. Pull it off, tin foil it, and let it come up to temperature, and then we'll be able to eat it. <laughs> Now it is time to throw our bird on the fire. I'm using a pellet grill. A lot of people have pellet grills now. Game changer for cooking wild game. It just makes it more tender. Uh, it's very controlled, super easy to use. I have a big green egg as well. I love using that for some things. Um, this is a Camp Chef woodwind. So you plug it in, it's electronic, and then you can control the temperature from there. So I've got it set to come up to about 350. I think it's at 345 right now. And I'm going to put a probe in there. I'm gonna let it cook until 155. This is about an eight pound bird. So it should only take uh, a couple of hours. Legs going up top. Body straight on. Put that probe deep in the breast area. Yeah. Beautiful spring day here at the treehouse, ladies and gentlemen. Love me some back porch cooking this time of year. Mmm. Oh, is she? Uh, let's see what she's got going over here for the sides. What do we got going in here for side options? Side options. Well, you wanted gravy, so I'm gonna make you some gravy, some wild rice, and some green beans. That sounds delicious. Does that sound good. It sounds like a mini Thanksgiving. And what do you got? What's happening over here? Um, well, those are my strawberry scone cookies. Okay, I need your opinion. Do you think those should have a glaze? Well, I have to try one first. You do have to try one. So you know what a scone tastes like. I know what a scone tastes okay. like. I'm not a big fan of scones. I know you're not. I'm. I love scones. <laughs> I love that they're like. They're like kind of crunchy, but they're dry. They go great with coffee. I mean, come on. Something about the scone, like verbiage. The scone. I don't know. The it's scone like, lifestyle. I'm gonna go get a scone. Like, well, I don't have much going on this morning. I'm gonna go get a scone. <laughs> like, I want, I want like biscuits, and gravy, and eggs, and I want to go conquer the world. Hey, but a scone, scone is like a ten o'clock. Maybe we'll get my Starbucks and get a scone. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Tastes like a biscuit. Okay. With strawberry jam. Is it like a sweet biscuit though? Yeah, it's very good. Okay. Is it cooked okay? Buttery as well. It's cooked good. 
fresh strawberries too. Just, just, you still want that crunch, but you don't, you don't want it to be too crunchy. Does it need mm. does it need a glaze on top? I like the simpleness of it. Yeah, maybe it'd be good with like a little strawberry butter. Strawberry butter? Mmm. But I can't add that on top. It'd be something that you kind of like, you know, like a strawberry jam, but it's a strawberry butter. That sounds delicious. I think it's good the way it is. I don't think it needs any of that, especially fresh. Yeah. Or maybe day two, it gets a little crusty, maybe one a little glaze. <laughs> but that right there is good. And in my mind, I don't, I don't really want to call that as good. You don't? You don't I just want to call it a, a breakfast cookie. But if I gave this to you saying it was a cookie, what would you think? You'd probably be like, oh. I go, it tastes like a biscuit. It's a cookie biscuit. A cookie biscuit. It's a mix. I don't, it's a good mix. I like it. Which I guess a scone is, but this is in cookie shape. <laughs> if it was a triangle, would you call it a scone? If it was a triangle, I would not like it. Because <laughs> it would look like a scone. I have no hope of being in any sort of shape this year. <laughs> now once October hits, I'm going to have to have a cleanse. Well, no when more. Come, That's when it comes out. That's when it comes out. So a month beforehand, maybe. That's also when Ben gets here. So good luck with that. <laughs> that is right. Oh yeah, I haven't even said anything on my channel. I'm but sure they've noticed. I mean, I've they, just got they this. They probably know. Stephanie is quite pregnant mm -hmm. now. Uh, baby mom. boy on the way in September, right during hunting season. Same as last time. You're we're welcome. doing it. We're doing it all over again. <laughs> You're but the good news is I will, will, I will be able to take my children on their birthdays into the elk country or, you know, getting into deer season. It's, uh, it'll be a cool, That's special, true. special deal. Because this little past birthday year surprise. we did um, Amy's second birthday camping and she loved it. So she I did. think that'll be like a family tradition. I think it'll be cool. And it'll be an excuse for me to sneak out and do a little hunting as well. All right, y'all, our turkey itself is about 80 degrees and our legs they've already got some smoke on them but they they look like they're drying out Ooh, that's a hard leg oh yeah they're already 140 i'm gonna take them out i'm gonna put them in our, our little gravy boat that we've made we're gonna brine juice them up close that back up and hopefully this meat is gonna break down a little bit So we've got about 20 degrees to go and our turkey's starting to get a little shriveled. We do have our legs in there, but I think I'm going to actually move the turkey into a glass pan to kind of capture some of the juices. Don't want to drop it on the floor like I did in a bushcraft camp. Is that funny, Emmy? Is that funny? There we go. Should be okay in there in that glass pan. At this point, it has taken about an hour and a half, so about 30 more minutes, I think, will be at tip. And Mama is going to have that gravy ready. And a little bit of olive oil on the last leg of the race here. We are about to hit 155, so I'm going to take it off. Oh yeah, she's looking good. We'll throw it out. Grab the old pan here. Go. Legs. Woo. For a little tin foil coverage. Keep those juices in there. <laughs> Time to get the gravy on the turkey and get it. Huh? What'd you do? Mama came back. Mama came back. Let's try it. Mama left us for a little while. She had some second thoughts about daddy. 
all these hunting trips and fishing trips. I always come back though. She left for about 30 minutes and she came back. <sighs> My great grandfather was a butcher. Little known facts. All right, let's carve some turkeys, y'all. Let y'all get a glimpse. Final result here, the sunlight coming in on it. It's beautiful. Let's look up here in the breast area. The breast area looks good. Looks real nice. We'll go ahead and check the temp on it. Make sure we're up there at that uh, 165-ish. Looks like our thighs are just way overdone, 175. 167, we're good for mom. Mom's pregnant, so we want to make sure we're not getting any E. coli or anything like that. Got the neck. Unfortunately, we don't have Winston anymore. Be a nice little treat for old buddy, but. All right, get a leg. The breast area actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna take a taste here of the leg right now. That was a mix of dark and light meat. Okay. Wow. Good job with the brown. Right here, your first time trying wild. God, that is really turkey. dark. It was really dark, right? Darker than I thought it would be. Okay, I'm kind of scared. Don't be. Mmm. You know, I think I got the brown a little salty. A little salty? Mm hmm. Or maybe we left, we left it in there a little long. It's good though, it's got good flavor. Oh my. Ooh. Oh my juicy wild turkey. I think I want that. I think I want that right there. I think you do too. I'm gonna split it with you. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where are you at with that? It's not as dry as I was, thought it was going to be. It's actually really good. Uh-huh. For a wild turkey with no fat. It's good. I take back what I said about the brine. Because on the white meat, that's perfect. Let's take a look at that. Look at that, folks. Mm-hmm. Wild turkey. That's looking like it's ready for Thanksgiving. Put a little gravy on it. Mm-hmm. Woo, baby. All right, now. Thigh, probably overdone. Leg, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of want one of those legs, though. <sighs> so I took some of the brine. I threw it in here. It I'm, I'm hoping good. that the brine is like. I'm, I'm assuming that it's it's okay to eat because I put there was some blood in there, but it's cooked. As long as it's been cooking with it. Like, did it's, you do yeah. that last minute? No, okay. I, I cooked it the like, entire time with it in there. Not the entire time, for the last hour or so. So. Yeah. OSG, big fan of turkey legs. I love bird legs. <laughs> you love bird legs. Love bird legs. You, you want the honors here? I want the honors, yes. Keep in mind, this is a wild bird that chases down animals and is enduring mating season right now. Okay. Burning a lot of calories. So it's not going to be as... Well, I can't pick that and eat it right now. You want me to eat that? Yeah, sure. Everyone's watching. Oh, but it's just, just so hot. I mean, they see the steam coming out. Okay. Just straight chewy or what? I heard these are like unedible. No. No? Not unedible. All right, let's get it. Turkey leg. My vote is yes. Not bad. Not bad at all. That turkey leg is totally edible. In fact, it's pretty daggum good. Uh -huh. It's a daggum good turkey leg. Well, stop eating my turkey leg. What is another one in here? <laughs> okay. That's fantastic. I shot a great one. Honey, you did good. Thank you. My first one turned out to be a great one. Emmy's carving over. Gotta make myself a plate with the gravy in the whole program. Golly, oh, this is really, really good. When I'm cutting it, it's like folding over because it's, it's so tender. Oh, you betcha. Full program. Turkey with gravy. 
try that right here. OSG gravy from scratch, wild rice. <laughs> Green beans with shallots. Mm. Well, I got three more tags. I'm gonna do my best to go fill them y'all because that is outstanding. Absolutely outstanding and it's so much fun to do. In my opinion, uh, I've only cooked them on a pellet grill smoker, but that is an excellent way to do it. I've, I've had good results with wild hogs, with deer, backstraps, doing tough pieces of meat that are typically hard to cook. Turns out really good with that pellet grill. So anyway, 350, couple hours, got it up to temp, let it rest in the tin bowl, and it's really, really juicy on the inside. And brining it. Can't forget about that. OSG. Got the brine. Shout out to you for doing the brine overnight. So thank you guys for tuning in today. Hopefully you learned something about some wild game cooking. Stay tuned for more outdoor action. Smash that like button for delicious wild game. And I'll see you guys on the next one. See you.